Europe has a sizable number of jobs and workplaces that are off the radar of the tax and labour authorities. Every year, that's an average of just under a fifth of the EU's 13 billion euro GDP. Policing this is up to individual member states, but with so much cross-border movement of workers, the EU has a significant role to play, as Georgi Pirinsky, the Bulgarian MEP steering legislation through Parliament, explains. Perhaps you can just define for me, first of all, what is undeclared work? It is legal work which is performed, but it is not properly declared before the uh, competent authorities. People being employed in undeclared work are very often severely at a disadvantage and are denied basic social and labor rights under law. But also uh, there is a severe impact on uh, the internal market in the sense of unfair competition. And last but not least, this undeclared work denies tax and social security systems of due um, income. And what sort of um, companies and, and economic operations are you talking about here? It is the construction industry, it is agriculture, it is tourism, also uh, the care services, uh, domestic work. Uh, in many of these, uh, undeclared work is a very sizable and painful uh, proportion of those employed. What is the platform? Basically what the platform is, is a venue for um, a responsible examination of information, sharing of best practices. Each member state uh, is expected to designate a senior authorized representative who within the member state is able to liaise with all the uh, authorities having to do with uh, regulating undeclared work from labor inspectorates to the tax and social security systems. Member states should feel quite uh, comfortable with uh, the observance of the subsidiarity principle, that is they are free to either undertake or not undertake any action they consider, but also seeking the value added at union level because clearly, especially when it's a matter of cross-border uh, border undeclared work, it is not up to uh, you know, simply the, the possibilities of an individual member state. There has to be this both enhanced information sharing, enhanced um, examination of experiences. How much um, undeclared work do you think has arisen as a result, first of the crisis and, and secondly of austerity measures? The, competitive environment in markets has become more acute with the recession. And then there are the structural factors, uh, let's say the lack of employment in many countries in the uh, eastern, southeastern, southern part of the European Union and people migrating to countries where more employment is available. And here again uh, you see uh, there is a significant degree of unfair practices of companies, operators, who uh, contract labor and then put them in precarious working conditions, have them accept uh, conditions which uh, initially were not at all clear that would be actually the, the way they would be working and living. And again, this is something which has to do perhaps also with austerity measures which have uh, squeezed uh, much of the funds going to, let's say, uh, active market policy measures. So it's a complex uh, set of factors, but very much to do with both structures, recession, and austerity. What would you say at the end of it all to those people who may find themselves um, in working in undeclared work, um, but who have a job and are grateful for that? There is uh, need of many of these um, people employed in such work to, to have where to turn to, to, to seek, uh, even if you like, information on their rights, um, understanding for the problem they are facing, protection. Actually, there are really drastic cases uh, where people suffer physical harm, where they are housed in not next to impossible conditions and where they really need a recourse uh, to an uh, institution or a body or a place where they can bring their concerns. And 
the knowledge that there is this problem uh, platform, that uh, there are uh, rep responsible uh, representatives of each member state sitting there who are clearly responsible for seeing that drastic infringements on basic rights do not take place is something very important. Okay, Georgi Perinsky, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for your Appreciate interest. It.